Welcome back to episode four of our Baldur's Gate campaign. Uh, we didn't get anywhere near as far as we wanted to in the last episode, and I seem to be finding that to be a recurring theme when I record these. Um, <laughs> so this is going to be quite a long series, which I'm happy with. Uh, I don't know if I'm happy with all the decisions I've made so far in the campaign, but they are what they are, and we're going to keep them. Uh, but yeah, we're going to make our way through this uh, stronger, this goblin camp here, which should be interesting. Try and save the druid. If we can, who knows? Um, and should be another, you know, 30 minutes of uh, basically just killing goblins, I suspect. But we should be moving on to a new area soon, which I am excited for. All right, I'll see you in there. Hear my voice. Obey my command. The voice is irresistible. You recognize the overwhelming authority that you've used on others only infinitely stronger and turned against you. Your vision clouds, leaving you in a dark, featureless shadowscape, nothingness in every direction. Then there are three figures before you, an armored male elf exuding Ooh, power elf. and command, ha, so the fox a younger is man up. with a quick, easy smile, it. and a pale young woman with even paler eyes. These are my chosen. They speak for me. Aid their search for the prison, and you will be worthy to stand beside them in my presence. Ah, so her orb does do something. ...from the artifact, lifting the pain from you, pushing the voice away. My power grows. My forces gather. The reckoning draws near. Don't give me that look. I don't know what just happened any more than you do. We should keep going. The voice is gone, muted by this, this gith relic. Why does a half-elf carry it? And so we meet the first of the absolutes. I should speak up. Troops. Absolute so gut. Somebody special. The absolute has touched you, hasn't she? Priestess gut needs to touch you too. Hold out your arm so I can mark your flesh. Why should I let you brand me? Let's the faithful recognize one another quick sharp. That way nobody will mess with you. And it's charged with magic. Ordinary slobs can't see it. Only us that follow the absolute. You ready? Brace yourself. This will sting. Actually, I'd rather not go through with this. After all, you're special, ain't ya? Like me. She probes your mind, tangling your thoughts with hers. A familiar sensation. She too carries a parasite. Darkness seems to swallow the temple, leaving you with a vision of the goblin priestess, receiving instruction from a handsome young man, one of the chosen. The vision dissolves away. You stand before the goblin priestess in the temple once again. Her faith floods into you, a tide of shuddering ecstasy. Her tadpole nestles within that mania, secure, hidden. I feel you in there, digging around. Works both ways. And I saw some weird shadows swimming around in your head just now. Maybe I can help with that. Us true souls gotta look out for one another.
Can we talk privately? This is a sensitive matter. I wonder if I can lead her to a death. I want this rabble interfering with true soul business. Let's go to my chapel. Oi! Priestess! Like us. We want the mark! Why do they think they're yeah. talking to a god? I we good enough for the absolute? I found a trader. That the jingle of coin I hear? You've timed it well, my friend. Already turned quite the profit today, so I'm feeling generous. You joking? Goblins sell the best prisoners. Cheap, quiet, and eager to be elsewhere. Oh, she's a slave so trader. Converted oh and started sending their captives to Moonrise Towers, at least. No complaints, mate. I just sold enough smoke powder to cover the loss ten times over. Ask what the do goblins want smoke powder for? That glint in her eye is bad news for someone. Not my concern, so long as I'm paid. Speaking of, something to trade or what? Let me see your wares. Greetings, child. I've met few aside from goblins here. Ah, are you also here to assist with the prisoner? You mean the one they're torturing? Please. The things they do to that man. So crude and primitive. I was invited to teach them. I live for pain and its intricacies, you see. But, alas. Pain without purpose is a terrible thing. Wouldn't you agree? It's appalling. Exactly. Pain is an intimate thing. It should be delivered with a loving and measured hand. But... Trying to discuss such subtleties with these creatures is simply... Forgive me, but that look in your eyes, something terrible has happened to you. Clever man, how did you know? Because I see those same eyes when I look in the mirror, dear one. We've all suffered in these... Dark times. It is little wonder you bear scars of pain and anguish. Please, let me alleviate this pain. And how would you do that? As the Maiden of Pain, the goddess Loviata teaches us through penance. Administered by my skilled hand. My work can grant peace and serenity, the likes of which few experience. It will be worth it. I promise. Go ahead. I'm sure you're in need of a little penance. All right. Why not? Oh, I have something. Exquisite in mind. Both Loviata and I are interested in how you handle pain, dear one. And should you delight her, you will most assuredly receive her most gracious blessing. Trust me. Simply face the wall and we can begin. At the ready. Yes, this will do nicely. <laughs> the pain you suffer will cleanse you. Do not fight it. Ha! 
<laughs> wonderful. Just wonderful. <laughs> wonderful. You want more? I'll give it to you. <laughs> That's it! Welcome the pain. Let it become part of you. <laughs> I hope that's a promise, dear one. Sweet child, you bore the pain like a true believer. I am proud to have served you this penance. Thank you. I enjoyed myself. Oh, as did I, dear one. Loviata herself found your performance inspiring. She has deemed you worthy of her blessing. to clear your head yes i'm ready smart all you need to do is open yourself to the absolute and i'll do the rest psionic feelers creep across your mind like a pickpocket's fingers seeking flaws in fabric sifting deeper she sees the mind flare holding a wriggling tadpole to your eye and then the vision lurches and you are looking through her eyes as a tadpole squirms into her skull. Help! We need to fish that thing out before it eats any important parts of your brain. No, it's messing with your brain. You're seeing things, probably hearing voices too, yeah? Heard enough. Time to die. You can't. The Absolute will crush you. My patience waits. Let's have some fun. We did her a favor. The Indus X. All right, well, that works. <laughs> I think we best hide this. Don't get comfortable, you horrible sacks of muck. Apparently, she wasn't dead yet. Interesting. Oh, now she is. Oh, Tasho Kekdorf! I command you, corpse. Speak. Reveal truth to the absolute. Nothing. Must be reading it wrong. Suga na Sukuk. The hobgoblin turns to you, and the parasite squirms in your skull. Dragonborn. You taste the ale on his tongue and the bile in his soul. The visions cloud your inner eye for a brief moment once again. You see the hobgoblin bowing before the armored elf you'd glimpsed before. The elf speaks of the hunt for a great weapon, and the rewards that will go to whoever finds it. The hobgoblin's eyes gleam hungrily. Guess it doesn't matter what you are. You're a true soul, and that's good enough for me. He doesn't speak his next words, yet they still rattle your skull from within. You ever talk to a dead squid? 
Now's your chance. This Mindflyer's build is smaller, its garb plainer. A fearsome creature even in death, but not the one that tormented you. Yet it too roamed the Nautiloid. It would have seen you, known you. Absolute says the dead Squiddy had a weapon. I reckon the killer nabbed it and scooted off to that looter camp. We find who killed it, and we find who took that weapon. So settle in. You feel Shadowheart's anxiety. The weapon the Absolute seeks is the artifact that she carries. The same one that protected you as you entered the Goblin camp. Her mind focuses. Their suspicion cannot be aroused. They cannot discover that the weapon they seek is within their grasp. You choke on black smoke as the hot goblin bellows his incantation. I command you, corpse. Speak and say sooth. Lucan Ock, I'll call that Shulko Corpse rises, tentacles writhing. Your heart seizes, and are questioning the creature might recognize you as its killer. Raxlin's mind reels, then calms. He will speak as you command. With Raxlin's voice, you ask, What did the killer want? Raxlin scowls, shocked by his own words, and a jolt shoots through your skull. The creature speaks in visions. A swarm of Githyanki dragon riders, silver blades held high, control panels melting, flesh pods spilled open. Githyanki, they know something. He is suspicious, confused by the question that fell from his lips. You proceed carefully. Why were the Gith chasing that ship? Uh, this is tits. You see dark tunnels lit by noxious pools of brine. The darkness spreads through the earth. The sky splits open and nautiloids pour out of a void that consumes the stars. What in the... Suspicion floods Ragsland's mind. Your brain howls as you force a final query into his throat. Who killed you, freak? Another vision consumes you. A memory seen through the creature's soul-dead eyes. You see a clawed hand open a holding pod, devoid of flesh, only darkness. That can't be! Wait! Hold on. Ragsling pierces your mind, prodding for truth. It's you. Absolute right hand. Right hand, huh? Sounds like word spreading. You're right. You're a real true soul. I felt it. The corpse collapses. Silent once more. No, no! I'm not done! Riddles, all of it. And nothing to show for the trouble but rotting squid meat. No answers, no killer, and no damned weapon! <sighs> that damned trow was right. Can't let her get all of that glory. Seems I ain't done with you. Report to the drow. Minthar is the name. She's mounting an attack on that blasted grove. Tell her you'll join her. I've been seen causing trouble. And for
won't work. is dead, but the parasite is still alive. You should take a look. The ringleaders have to die. The very natural order. You did it. You actually did it. The leader's dead. <laughs> Praise Sylvanus. No, that's not right. Praise you, my friend. The Grove owes you a debt beyond measure. Killing's never my first choice. But those three were too dangerous to leave alive. Let's get out of this pit firstly. Return to the Grove. I'll make my own way there. I can see to some matters there, and we can discuss what comes next amidst more bucolic surroundings than here. Aye, my, what manner of place is this? A path to redemption? Or a road to damnation? Hard to say, for your journey is just beginning. I 
came just in time. You are transforming. I know your voice. I've heard it before. Yes, you have. I saved you before. save you again. Don't worry. You will not become a Mind Flayer. Not while I'm around. I'll protect you. We haven't much time, so listen closely. There is great potential within you. It comes from that parasite. Your instinct is to resist the power it gives, but you must accept it, nurture it. I will keep it from consuming you, but for the sake of both of us, you must learn to wield it. for the fate of Faerun, a fight we are losing, for now. You can change that, but only if you embrace your potential. I have to go. The enemy is closing in. I will be back. What is happening? I feel like the past four hours never happened. Alright guys, that's where we're going to be ending the episode here. Uh, thank you. So, yeah, some interesting stuff happened with that episode, but a little bit of a, a set backwards. And uh, we'll see what happens going on. Alright, I'll catch you later. See you in the next one. Bye.